Sticker Podcast, Stories Behind the Craft, Christmas Edition. As you can see, I'm dressed up in the colors. This is my last year Christmas. Than I ever been. I ain't um, really get to like, update how I really wanted to. Because, you know, Christmas is kind of What happened? Oh, it's going to lag a little bit. It's going to be straight. Um, Yeah, so, yeah, I didn't really get to update how I wanted to this year. This year been a real big uh, learning curve for me. Um, but the main topic of discussion today is we're talking about the struggles of being a podcaster. Because um, a lot of people just see people on podcasts and having fun and things of that nature. But they don't really know what it takes to um, be in the chair of a podcaster. Especially if you want to do something like this to, for it to be lucrative or something for it to be fun, things of that nature. And I really haven't got on here and explained, like, my story or where I came from, things of that nature, because I always was just in the motion and doing stuff and trying to get content. And I was just, I was just always on go, on go, on go, and I never really sat back and actually um, sat back and gave y'all the story behind what Wall Thinking Podcast. I, I gave y'all bits and pieces of it, but I never really got to sit down and talk in front of the camera just by myself, no guests or nothing like that. Because I was just, I was always, I wouldn't say I was scared of the camera, but I was just scared of how it would come out and how I, how I wanted it to be. And I'm a, I'm kind of a, a, a perfectionist. I wanted it, everything to be perfect. I wanted everything to look good. I wanted my guests to be treated well and things of that nature. And I didn't understand. Um, now I do. I understand what it takes, and I understand. Uh, the amount of time and effort that you got to put into this, especially if this is something that you really kind of want to do. Um, so let's fast, let's backtrack to when I first started. Um, I first started a podcast because I was kind of lost. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, I was I was just like trying to figure out like my life and what I want to do. I didn't want to go to college. I didn't want to go to the military. I didn't want to do nothing. I just wanted to be a regular person. Like, I always thought, like, you know, I could just work, make some money. And I, I knew I wanted to do something along the line of entrepreneurship, but I kind of never um, knew exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to do clothes, but I wasn't, like, really understanding what how to do the clothes or how I wanted the clothes to look because I was always big on dressing. If you knew me, I always, when I wanted to, I could dress up a little bit. Um, not the best dress, but I could put some things together. Um, but... I was kind of lost, and then I went to Tally. Um, I went to Tally, and I was alone, like like by myself, like just thinking about different ways I can make money, thinking about different things I could do to to put myself in a better position. Cause I was always kind of the type of person to do stuff by myself and never follow the curve. Um, so I was like, bro, why don't I like start like my own TV show or something with me just doing something and. I was in a hotel eating my Applebee's and just going over different things. And I love drink champs. I love I Am Athlete. And I came back home and I told I told everybody, I was like, bro, I want to do something like I Am Athlete. I want a bunch of guys. We all talking and we all talking about different topics and we all blow up together or whatever. That was my first mistake, thinking I could count on people. You know what I'm saying? I, I was like, you know what? Let me just do it by myself and just have different segments and bring people on. And... It didn't work out like that until now, like now where I'm at now. But we're going to get into all of that. Um, so after that, uh, I told my stepdad I wanted to do something new for the new year, which was like probably January, like December 2021. And after that, I um, what I did after that, I, I called my boy T-Boy. Shout out to T-Boy, man. I called him. I was like, bro, I'm going to start a TV show. I want you to be a part of it. I want you to be a part of my first episode. We're going to talk about We're just going to bounce around topics. And we just going to talk about stuff. And it was like, all right, bet. One thing about, like, my peoples, they always kind of, like, support me. Because I'm always like, well, I'm finna do this. And I never stick with it. But they always kind of go along in the journey with me. So it was like, all right, well, let's see what Nate can do. Because every time Nate do something, it kind of, like, bounced in and bounced out. And I finally um went and I brought him to the house. I set up. I had two iPhones. I set up my iPhone 8 and my iPhone 12. 
and I set them up on tripods, and we just was talking. I don't even know what happened to them videos, but we were just talking about all types of stuff and things of that nature, and I was excited and happy about it because I was like, this is something I finally did on my own. I, I'm, I'm finally bringing something new to the table and things of that nature, and then I showed my stepdad, and he was like, man, that shit ugly as hell, dog. Like, that shit's terrible. And I'm like, bro, what you mean? Like, this is, I'm working with what I got because I'm the type of person, like, anything I, I feel like anything I do, I could go far with it because I'm just the type of person I am and the type of people I'm around and things of that nature. So, I followed that. He was like, well, I got a studio where you want to, where you can shoot and you can really take this to the next level. And I was like, all right. He was like, well, you got to pay this amount, which is like $50. I was like, all right, cool. I got a job. I can pay it. So, when I got in there, my mind just instantly went to another level. It was like, I really, really, because I was telling all these artists and all these entrepreneurs and all these athletes, I'm finna start my own show, I'm finna start my own show. Tap in with me, tap in. And everybody's like, all right, all right, for sure. Some of them people still haven't showed up. That's cool. But the people that I really was close with, really tapped in with, they actually, you know, tapped in with me. So literally my first episode was shot on the phones again because the cameras wasn't there. Uh, shout out to EG Mikey. Uh, he pulled up on, well I, well, I had to go pick him up from his house because that's how serious I was about it. I went to go pick him up from his house. This man was sleeping in the back of my car. I picked him up. I was like, bro, let's shoot this episode. And literally, I literally went and um, I literally went, posted the behind the scenes of the um, the video and everybody like, it's just like that junk was like spread like wildfire, like wildfire and everybody was like, Oh, shoot, you really finna start this? And I'm like, yeah. So, literally, after I did EG Mikey, I just was like, I thought of this smart idea. This is free game, because a lot of people ain't gonna give you free game, but I'm gonna give you some free game. Um, I loaded up on videos all December. Loaded up from December 1st all the way to January 1st. I loaded up so I could just stay consistent, because that's the main thing they tell you on YouTube. If you wanna, If you want something... You got to be consistent. So I was like, the only way I could be consistent if I shoot a whole bunch of videos ahead of time so I can be able to um, keep up. And mind you guys, I wasn't hip to the Orlando culture instead of, until I started doing the podcast because I was always mainstream and I always was in my own world. I was a sports fanatic. I cared about sports. I didn't care about music. I didn't care about nothing. Um, so as I started doing the podcast, uh, E.G. Mikey came along, Pharaoh, then Jaquan Burton came along, Africa Black. I just was hitting people up like, hey, come do the podcast, and just showing behind the scenes of the last episode I did, showing them what I was doing. They were like, oh, this is a dope setup. I'm going to come pull up because I really want to see what this is about. And then it just started building. And it kind I kind of got away from what I was really trying to do and really trying to bring to the table. And I was just like, okay, my, my whole mind frame was, I'm going to get all these people with clout. I'm going to get them on the pod, and it's going to blow me up. And I was sadly humbled and mistaken because if they don't promote the video, you stuck with the views and you stuck with the promotion because they're doing their thing. They're just the face. You got to make it look like how it was. So I was like, damn. I was like, damn. Uh, all right, how am going to figure this out? What can I do? And I was just watching different videos every day, trying to see what I can do to make the podcast better. And me and my stepdad was rolling. Like, we was rolling. We was recording every single week. We was recording, like, five, ten videos a, a week. We was getting it in. That's why I kind of started off with a fire. Um, so, fast forward, because a lot, like I said, this podcast is, like, a more intimate. I wanted to give you all all the game of what happened in the last two years, because a lot of people seen the humps and bumps of what we're doing now. So, after we started on this hot street, we kind of, me and my stepdad reached a point where everything started kind of getting bubbled up because he had personal things going on. I had personal things going on, and it kind of put a hiccup. He had to go away for a while, and I had to figure out. So one thing that I could say about being a podcaster, you got to learn how to work a camera. You got to learn how to work a mic. You got to learn how to work certain things because if you don't and you count on somebody to help you with that, when, when they're not able to help you, what are you going to do? So I'm saying, so I had to learn those things. Like that's what took me so long to get back to the consistency that I'm on now because I had to learn how to shoot. I had to go invest and buy cameras. I had to go invest and buy mics. I had to invest in different things. And I'm the type of person, bro. I always get stuck on certain things, and it just made me like kind of want to learn more. Cause 
that's how I knew the podcast was for me because every time I hit a bump, I was trying to figure out why I hit that bump. Other things that I used to do, like when I played football, soccer, I was like, all right, hit the bump, whatever. But with this, I was just trying to keep finding consistency ways to build my platform and excuse me, build my platform and build build a build a life for myself because I knew this is something that I wanted to do. And my numbers were doing well because it was something new or something fresh. And I always wanted to give that journalist side of me, and I, I wasn't doing that. I was just interviewing rappers, 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 sports sports people here and there. I wasn't really giving the journalist in me w- that I knew I could do because I looked up to Steve Harvey. I looked up to um, Eric Thomas. I looked up to all these guys who was doing different stuff, and I was like, all right, I got to figure this out. So when I finally um, got back into the motion um, – Shout out to uh, Matty Ice. He was bringing me clients even when I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do. It was times where my camera wouldn't cut on. It was times where my laptop wouldn't load up the videos. It was times where I had to shoot on my phone when an artist pulled up because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So it was like those were the pains I had to go through in order for me to learn. Like I didn't know like now that my cameras are shooting great quality now, I didn't know how it was shooting. I was messing up on people's videos. I got videos in my laptop right now. That hasn't been dropped because they look terrible, and I didn't want to give that out to the world, and I didn't want to mess up those people's brands. So to those people, I apologize. Like, I, I reached out to all y'all, and I told y'all if y'all want to come back, you know, we can come back and do this all over again because I wanted to do it the right way. And that's what a lot of people don't talk about because they don't they don't show the, the bad. They only show the good, and I wanted to show the good, and everybody noticed my quality going down. So I just kept going. I kept pushing. And then fast forward, you know, my promotion went down because I wasn't sending out the videos on Snapchat every day. Like, I wasn't consistent like I was supposed to because, you know, as a person, as a human being, whether you're a man or a female, you're going to go through personal issues. You're going to go through lumps and bumps. You're going to go through all the things you go through. But if you really love something, you really want to be a part of it, you're going to do it. Shout out to my auntie. She's in the back burner. She been on the podcast. Um, but um, one thing I would tell myself is study. I didn't study at all. I just was, I just, I did my research as in interviewing, but I didn't do my research in the behind the scenes. I just was like, bro, I'm, I'm going to bring these niggas in and we're going to turn up and we're going to have fun. And it's like, another thing that I would stop listening to the outside noise, just focus on you. Like, do what you feel is happy. Stop listening to what this person got to say. Or stop trying to go with this person's idea. If you don't want this on your podcast, then don't do it. If you don't want this on your podcast, don't do it. So that's what I would tell myself. And also just stay focused and keep learning. Like, it was been times where Ronald's been doing stuff with the cameras, and I'm just sitting there waiting to start. Instead of, like, paying attention to him and seeing what he's doing, for me to be like, okay, let me tap in here. Let me, let me see. Let me do this. And it just... That's what kind of killed me and it gave me a crutch to where, like, now it's like, all right, now I can come in here and set up my own stuff. Now I can come in here and make sure the sound right. Now I can make sure the switches is where it need to be and my guests look, like, good and stuff like that. And um, another thing, too, like, that I struggle with, my appearance, like, trying to look good in front of the camera. I didn't care some of the times. I come in looking busted, no haircut, um, looking crazy. And it's like that goes for me not caring what people thought about me. I was just like, I'm here for the content. I'm not here to look good for y'all. I'm here to show y'all my journalist side. So that's another thing that I kind of struggle with, especially like me working at No Fault. Um, They're telling me about my parents, me getting together. And just picking up another job, that's another thing that kind of crushed me a little bit, knocked me off my my pivot. Um, But like I said, inflation is real, you know, so you got to keep up with the masses and keep up with payments. Um, and things like that. Uh, not too much of the personal, but y'all know how it is. Um, but fast forward that, um, it took me a while to understand. So that's how SOB came apart because I was trying to keep my name still flowing. And I was like, bro, I want to throw a What Were I Thinking talent show just to keep the podcast entangled with something. And and then it was like, people was like, bro, you can't throw no show. I was like, bro, I could do whatever I want to do. Like, I really can do anything I put my mind to. That's how I always thought thought of myself. Still to this day, I still think about myself as a, I could do whatever I put my name on, I think it will go. Um, just because of the support system I have. And 
literally SOB was a success. It was stressful because I, I was a first time doing it and dealing with the artists I was dealing with. It was tough because I was trying to learn all their personalities and get them content. I always try to make it be different for them. And it just it just kind of made me like understand like I need it because everybody was like, why you don't do the podcast? Why you don't do the podcast? And the podcast just kept coming around, kept coming around. And I just literally was like, I just literally was like, damn, all right, I finally got this. So SOB came, and then I was like, my mom always running and always thinking about different things. And then I was like, why don't I do a women's segment? Because, like, the females wasn't tapping in with me. So I'm like, why don't I do something for the ladies? Like, something where ladies can grow and ladies can, you know, understand from other women. Um, that's where, hence where the what women are really thinking came about. So the story behind that was, I was like, the women ain't vibing with me. What can I do to get the girls to understand or try to tap on the podcast more? And then I was like, I got all these women around me. I hang out with women more than I hang out with males because women can't envy me. You know what I'm saying? Women always going to support. Women always going to show love. So I had all these girls at no fault, all these women in my life, my aunties, my mom, my friends, um, females that I've grown in contact with and we still not done with the segment the segment's still coming coming along we still got more episodes that I want to record because there's females out there that I didn't get to record that I still want to do content with um but yeah like um once I started doing that that kind of made everything go crazier because it made it it made me put me in another pedestal and then I wasn't on the camera so it actually showed my journalist side, and it, it made it more more fun for me because I got back to doing what I really originally wanted to do, which was tell people's story. That's why I changed it to what we're all thinking stories behind the crowd because when you sit in the chair next to me, I want you to be able to tell your story because I – the, another inspiration to my show is if you ever watch MTV or VH1, I forgot which one it was on. It was called Behind the Music. So it'll bring all the artists on and they'll tell their story from the beginning to the end or to the current. Uh, um, to the current. So I was like, damn, that's dope. I used to watch those all the time. So I was like, if I can get here and have somebody tell stories and tell their story and tell where they came from, it made me. I was I was happy with it because sometimes if y'all notice I'm on the camera I'm looking at them because I'm actually interested in what they're talking about I'm not just here to just you know just sit here and look cool no I'm actually interested that's why I chose certain people that I chose I didn't just chose anybody to get on the, on the pod because that's what everybody does in Orlando they just want to take everybody money and not really care about what they got to say not to throw no shots at anybody but if you feel any type of way that's your business um but yes so that's why I kind of was like. All right, you know, let me let me just push it like that. And then I went to Homestead, recorded with them ladies. That was great experience because they all was telling a story from a different altitude and dealing with their own things. And then the episode that really touched me a lot was me and my mom because that was the first time my mom was actually, like, she was vulnerable the first episode when we did with, with her and her sisters, but she was more vulnerable in that state and I, I kind of actually got to be more in my mom's life because me and my mom we talked we got a good relationship but actually her opening up on the camera was something that was great and you know i i, I understood her a lot more that made our relationship a lot better because i understood where she came from how she did it and then same token like even the women from homestead having kids at a young age uh learning how to be a mother on the fly like that that taught me a lot you know, because my mom's from Homestead, and like like I said in the other videos, me growing up, it was always like, stay out of grown folks' business. Like, you know, we doing our, our, our stuff, you go be a kid, and I always was trying to see what they was doing. Like, I always was nosy. I think that's why me growing up, I was like, I want to be around girl because I was always around women. Um, yeah, so that was fun, and then the consistency started coming back. Um and then I uh, tapped in on West Orlando Sweet. Shout out to uh, Miss Tanika. She gave me an opportunity to come record. And I started, I felt the fire again to me, to me recording and me being on the camera again. Because I was kind of hiding because I, I wanted to get myself back together. And mental health was a real big thing back, back when I was down. I was trying to get my mental together. And um, shout out to uh, BTG Murder, Pharaoh. ABC Smoke, when I wanted to start recording, the boys came through, and the boys started recording, and we had some good episodes. I think I think we learned a lot in those six months, especially, like, 
me recording. And um, I sat back and I looked at my videos today and I was just like, damn, like I'm like the most consistent a lot than I ever been. Um, and it's like the growth from the first video to now, I'm, I'm way more confident on the camera. Like the first video with Mikey, I was looking in the ground like this. I couldn't, I wasn't even talking to the mic because I was nervous. Um, to now where I could look at the um, camera confidently and be able to talk and be able to articulate myself very well. And, you know, I got to give a shout out to the No Fall group because I was in front of the camera all the time and it made me talk to the camera and made me, you know, do those different things. But now I'm here, I'm understanding. And um, like I said, I want to grow my audience. We, we hit 500 subscribers in six months, you know, not being as consistent as we're supposed to be. I want to be as consistent as I can because I want to grow and I want to build a family with you guys. So, you know, this Christmas, it kind of, like, was a reflection on me and what I wanted to do and kind of made me understand my vision and where I wanted to go because I'm, I'm a firm believer in understanding your vision and understanding where you want to go. Um, and this is where I want to be, and I'm happy to be here. I'm happy and I'm glad, you know, that y'all actually tapping in, watching the videos. Um, when I see the views and when I post, because I was posting, like, videos and just not looking at them, and I was getting 15, 16 views, it just made me happy. It made me understand that people are actually watching this and actually understanding, like, you know, this is something that they 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 tune in. Every every Sunday, they tune in. They want to see what Nathan's doing, who Nathan has on. But I promise to you guys that we're going to have a lot more content, a lot more different people in here talking about different stuff and we're going we're going to grow together cuz y'all basically watch me grow for nothing, you know. So, we're going to have another podcast soon where I'm going to be sitting here and we're going to talk about the year in review. Um a lot of people ask me what's my favorite episode. Um I wouldn't say that I have a favorite episode cuz I love all my episodes. That's why I recorded them. Um but my favorite episode is always the next one cuz you don't know especially if a person I haven't recorded is good to see what they what they've been through because you could probably relate and i want when you come to the channel you want to i want you to be able to relate with my guests or relate with me um especially if you trying to get in this field or you're trying to do anything with this and i and i'm and i want to do like more collabs but i also want to you know show myself having more fun i felt like i was up here like trying to be as professional as i could but like now i'm like let me relax let me actually talk and actually like how i normally do just talk that's what we're here for just to talk and have a good time but you know i want to say merry christmas to all everybody um i don't celebrate christmas i haven't celebrated christmas in like 10 years i would say um it's not because you know it was a religious thing it's more so my mom gave us an ultimatum do you want to go on a cruise or do you want a christmas presents and we always chose cruise so we just never celebrated Christmas. We always around each other on Christmas. Don't get it wrong. But I just feel like I can give you a gift any day. I don't have to give it to you on Christmas. You know, people just make it bigger than what it is. Um, so, yeah. So y'all like, comment, subscribe on this video. Thank y'all for coming and tuning in with this video. I don't know how long this video was. But I just want y'all to know, like, I want to leave y'all with this. Um. If you want to do something, do it. Don't let nobody stop you. Don't listen to nobody. If you're going to do something, do it. Because nobody going to believe in your craft more than you. Nobody going to want to see you win until the money start flowing in. Nobody want to see what you got going on until you getting the money. Because I'm a, I'm a testament to that. When, before I did the podcast, nobody was checking for me. And then once I actually started showing them that I was consistent and people was believing in me and trusting in me, I finally got where I need to be. So, you know, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to you and your family. This is what we're all thinking, podcast, story behind the craft. Um, be prepared for 2024 because we're coming up crazy. Love y'all. We out. Yo, 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 it's your boy Nate, man. The hottest podcast out right now. What we're all thinking, podcast. Man, y'all need to go like, comment, subscribe for real, man. This podcast is going up. We got we got bangers on the way. A lot of bangers, man. Y'all go view them last two episodes, man. Y'all really vibe with me. And we out.